Hello, seventh standard. You have uh, completed the last topics of your chapter four. So today we will be looking on the next topics like primary colors and secondary colors. So now let us see what is a primary color. So colors that cannot be formed by any other color is called as your primary color. So colors which cannot be formed by any other color is called as your primary color. So when you look here, so by without mixing, there are certain colors which exist in nature by themselves. So those colors are called as your primary color. I have given three different circles here. Yes or no? Now what is the major color which exists in each of these three circles? Can you see? Yes, one is red, another one is green, and another one is blue. So this three colors are called as your primary color. Red, green, and blue. Is it okay? So follow me. Red, green, and blue. So this three color can exist in nature by themselves. There is no need to form these colors by adding any other two colors. So it is called as your primary color. Now what could be your secondary color? Yes, your secondary color is nothing but when I add two primary color. Okay, when I add two color, the next color which I am going to get is called as my secondary color. So now re uh, just recollect your primary colors. Your primary colors were red, blue and green. Now if I am going to add any of these two, I will get a new color. This new color can be termed by secondary color or composite color. Now I am going to add red and blue. So what happens if I add red and blue? I will get a magenta. Next one. I'm going to add blue and green. Yes. So if I add blue and green, I'll get a color which is called as sign. Okay. I get a color which is termed as sign. Next one, uh, green and red. If I'm going to add green and red, I'll get one more color which is called as your yellow. So all these can be obtained by you also. Just take your painting palette and try doing it. So you take any two colors, mix them, you will find a different color. That is nothing but your secondary colors. So using your red, blue and green, you try to obtain your yellow, magenta and sign. You will do it. Okay, you can end up in these colors. So colors which are obtained by two primary colors. Okay, the point should be remembered here always is colors which is obtained by or mixing. If I'm going to add it or mix it, any two primary colors, then that color is called as my secondary color. Colors which can be formed by mixing up is called as your secondary. Colors which cannot be formed by mixing up is called as my primary colors. So you are clear with your primary color and secondary color. Now I'm going to ask a question. All these colors together to put my primary secondary i'm going to do it i'm going to add all these colors together now what happens just think of it think of your previous picture which i showed you now okay you would have seen a picture right now where you have the three circles and in the center you see something different okay. but here when you add all these colors together your red yellow green sign blue magenta you put all your primary and secondary together you get a color which is called as your white color or your white light so color is nothing but a light you, if you see anything it's nothing but it's a form of light so when you add all the lights together all different colors of lights together you get a light which is called as your white light that is why right from your beginning you would have studied white light is a combination of all colors. What do you have to study? White light is nothing but the combination of all colors. Now I'm going to do the reverse way. I'm going to add all colors. What light I would get? White light. As simple as such. Okay. So white light is nothing but the combination of all colors. If you add all those colors. So what are the colors which exist in rainbow? Your rainbow has seven colors. When you add all these seven colors, you'll get your white light. The same manner when you add all your primary and secondary colors, you will get your white light. So students, I want you people to practice this diagram by heart. Okay, so what do you do? If you're having your crayons or pencil colors, 
draw these circles just try shading so here you do the green part okay this full area do the green and this area you try the red and intermediate it will turn up into yellow so don't shade in this particular area the remaining area you shade it and the center part will be white as well so just practice the circle in your home and this has to be drawn in your classwork as well So we all know what is the primary color, what is the secondary color and what happens when all these colors are mixed together. So primary color is the one which cannot be obtained by adding of any two colors. Secondary color is the one which can be obtained by mixing of any two primary colors alone. And white light is the formation of all the colors. Next one. How does an object appear in a particular color? how does an object appear in a particular color you're going to wear a black shirt or you're going to wear a shirt which consists of red blue how does that appear to me how what is happening there now just look at this particular diagram so here you can see white light falls on it now your white light consists of seven colors so that seven colors has been shown here the white light consists of how many colors? Seven colors. What are those seven colors? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So all these seven colors have been drawn. Now all the seven colors are, yeah, they just fall on your apple. So we don't know what color is the apple is. So we just imagine all the seven colors falls on it. Now after the light falls on the apple, only one color comes out. What is the color coming out here? It is your red color. The color which comes out here is your red color. So it simply means all these seven colors falls on your apple. The apple absorbs all the six colors and the remaining one color is thrown out. So that color is red. Therefore your apple appears to be red color. So here you see the color reflected or absorbed by the object. The color reflected or absorbed by the object, the color present in the light that is thrown on the object. I'm going to throw a white light. Okay, the object absorbs all six colors and it will throw just one light, reflect only one color. So the reflected color is the color of your object. Therefore, the color of the object is not in the object, but it is in the light. The color of the object is not in the object but it is in the light so whatever light you are going to throw accordingly the color of the object will come outside so if I'm going to throw a red light it will be different if I'm going to throw a blue light it will be different so in that manner your color of the object will change so as of now we are going to learn with an idea I'm going to throw a white light now imagine you are going to have a shirt which is a combination of uh, yellow and green. Now what will happen? So the shirt will absorb all the remaining colors and what it will reflect yellow and green. So what are the remaining colors it will absorb? It will absorb your violet, indigo, blue, orange and red. So all five colors will be absorbed by the Yes, absorbed by the object and your yellow and green alone will be thrown outside. That is reflected back. So that is how we determine the color of an object. So color of an object is determined by what color is absorbed or reflected and the color of the light. So it depends if you are going to use a white light or a red light or a green light or any other thing. Okay. The next topic is color subtraction so you might say miss what is this color subtraction do we do this in physics yes we do now i'm going to deal with the first example white minus red white minus red okay in this case what happens your white light consists of all seven colors as of now i'm going to include just red blue and green so if red, blue and green falls on it, this is minus red. So what will happen? Red and red. Red and red will get cancelled off. Blue and green is only present in that particular light. Now 
what color you will get here? You will get the color which is called as your sand. You will get a color which is called as your sand color. Therefore, that object will appear to be in that particular color. So, color subtraction means I am going to throw a particular limit on an object. Okay, and I am going to find it. The process of determining the color of an object in a single light. Single light means it is your white light or mixture of colors. Mixture of colors means I am going to take two different color. I am going to throw it on an object and find what color I am going to get it. Is thrown on an object is known as your color subtraction. The color that is absorbed or reflected is subtracted from the original light. It is a color that is absorbed or reflected. The same example is given in your textbook. So, you are having a white light. Let me take the white light as a mixture of lead, red, blue and green. Now, the object is going to be in a color or the object is absorbing red light. The object is absorbing what light? Red light. So, what light will be reflected outside? It will reflect blue and green. So, no. so red and red will get cancelled out. Blue and green will be reflected outside. So, when you add blue and green, what is the color name is called? It's called as your cyan color. Now look at your example too. So instead of white light, I'm going to use which light here? Yellow light. I'm going to use which light here? Yellow light. So again, uh, an yellow light is thrown on the object and the object is going to absorb the red color. The object is absorbing the red color. Uh, now what is your yellow light? Yellow is nothing but the combination of red and green. Okay, look into your uh, pictures. If you look into your pictures, you'll get an idea about it. Uh, red and green will give you yellow color. Red and green will give me what color? Yellow color. Therefore, red and red get cancelled off. Okay? This red, red and red will get cancelled off. And therefore, what color I will get here? Green. So, in this second example, if you throw yellow light, you will get what color? green color. A low light on a red absorbing sub substance, you will get a green color. So, this is called as your color subtraction. So next one is one of the important and most interesting topic, formation of rainbow. Whenever you say after it raining, you will find there is a band of colors, a colorful substance which appears on your clear sky. So, how does it appear? From where we are able to get it? So, it is nothing but your rainbow. How do we get a rainbow? Now, just imagine what happens after the rain. You will have raindrops. Yes or no? You will have the water droplets everywhere. And after rain, in the clear sky, you will get a bright sunlight. So, when this sunlight When this sunlight falls on this water droplet, okay, when the sunlight falls on this water droplet, it is just get dispersed. Okay, the water droplet disperse all these to give your white light. So when the sunlight falls on this uh, raindrop, the raindrop will split the white light. Okay, I'm sorry. The raindrop will split the white light to give this all seven colors. So, that is how we are getting your rainbow. So, splitting up of white light into seven colors is called as your dispersion of light. Okay, the splitting up of white light into seven colors is called as my dispersion of light. Okay, you split your color. How do we split them? You allow the sunlight to pass through a water droplet. It will split it because of your reflection. Because of your reflection. Can you see? Here it is undergoing reflection. Yes or no? It is striking here and it is thrown away. So once this reflection takes place, it will produce as rainbow. So splitting up of white light into seven colors is called as your dispersion of light. So what are the seven colors we know? It is from violet to Red, we call them as Vigia. We call them as Vigia. So here I have shown violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, 
orange and red. So this seven colors together they are termed as Big G R. So all these seven colors are exist in nature. That is, they are found in the atmosphere. So this can be obtained in your labs also. You can do this in your lab, but you cannot always look for a water droplet. Instead of a water droplet, we use a substance or a material which is called as your prism. We use a material which is called as your prism. Prism is nothing but a triangular shaped glass object, a three dimensional triangular shaped glass object. So it will have two rough, I mean one uh, rough surface and smooth surface. If you allow a white light to pass through the prism, the prism will show all the seven colors. Okay, this you can play in a normal glass also you can obtain this, but the prism pro provides a better resolution of your seven colors. So instead of your water droplet, we use another substance which is called as your some in your laboratory. So how do the rainbows are formed? You have a water droplet, you allow the sunlight to fall on it. The light, the white light is split up into seven colors by the water droplet. That is how your rainbow is formed. So the important word is splitting up of white light. What light is broken here and going to split? Split means you're going to break. Okay, you just going to divide it. So I'm going to divide all my white light by which I'll get the seven beautiful band of colors. So those seven beautiful band of colors are nothing but your rainbow. So hope you understand all these concepts. Just learn it again.